Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Schick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Schick. This is the indoors, but right away we are headed to the dark, cold outdoors. It's early morning, it's really cold. I'm still up in Northern Manitoba at Viking Lodge, and I'm on another mission today. Today is going to be a walleye with possibly some lake trout mixed in. We're gonna fish a little bit shallower and a new spot to me and see if we might be able to put some walleye in on top of the ice, along with lake trout too, hopefully you never know. Uh, I decided this morning that since it's so cold out, minus 25, I'm gonna do the intro inside, pack up all the camera gear, get the shack set up, and then fish for the day. Once it's this cold, cameras die so fast outside, just so much easier to leave all the cameras warm in the case and take them out once I get everything going in the shelter. So we're going to get going. Got to get packed up first. Probably got another 20 minutes, half hour before I'm ready to go. So the next time you see me, I'll be in the shelter. Here we are, set up, finally. I don't even want to look what time it is. It's light outside, that's for sure. Yeah, it's 10 o'clock. By the time I left the cabin, sledded, got set up, two hours. I guess I should have left at six o'clock. It's the way it goes. It's hard on these trips sometimes because I'm dumping footage at night, charging batteries, reorganizing, especially the multi-species trip, re-gearing up for a different species, um, doing a little bit of editing, et cetera. Not that I'm making excuses. It's just, uh, yeah. The crappy thing is days are so short. Like, I feel like I got six hours to fish and if I don't see anything here in the first two hours, three hours, I'm probably gonna wanna make a, a move. But we are set up, enough talking. Let's fish, I'm gonna drop down in one hole I got going here, I'm gonna go jig in a minute. And the other hole, I'm gonna start with a rattle bait here. A little bit active, try to call them in. I went with two holes today, just so I can give them two different presentations at the same time. Fingers crossed, ladies and gentlemen. So hopefully, makes, hopefully we can make something happen for the walleye. So far, trout's been good. Lake trout and big rainbows. Now we need to capitalize on some big walleye, and then we can finish off with some big pike fishing. Oh, what is this? What is this? It's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Pike, maybe? I think it's a pike. I'm pretty sure it's a pike. It's fighting like a pike. It's fighting like a pike. We caught a fish. We got a fish. What's it gonna be? Could be a laker too, I guess. Could be a laker, maybe? Pike or laker? I'm gonna get wrapped up in my other line, I can tell. Hopefully I can get it up first. What do we got? It's a pike. What I kind of figured. Looked, looked long and skinny as it was coming up the hole. Yeah, caught on my other line. I gotta open my bail here. I knew that was gonna happen. Pike are the worst for getting tangled in the other line. Well, that's a fat, oh, it wants to freak on me when I hold him. Don't freak on me, girl. That's a fat pike right there. Well, we're fishing for walleye, but it is multi-species for sure. We could catch pike, we could catch lake trout, we could catch ciscos, whitefish, a little bit of everything. Probably a nice like 35 inch pike, probably I could measure. I, I could measure it, but uh, she's pretty lively and we just wanted to get her back. Okay, let's get my other rod untangled here and get back down. I was totally on my phone as that fish was coming in. I saw it sleeking out from this way. I, uh, Matt, who was in my last video, is fishing a mile away from me too, and we're fishing two different spots to get a feel for what's going on out there. Oh, I got a mess here. I wonder if it's gonna be easy just to cut and retie. And he, uh, has caught a walleye so far, I believe. He got fish fishing about a good half an hour to an hour before I did, because of the old camera setup. But we thought we'd separate this morning, divide and conquer, see what we could figure out. And uh, somebody can get on a hot walleye bite, well then we can move over to where the other person is. Okay, we are retied. I'm using the 60 millimeter Frosty Clownfish Tantrum from Frostbite been a really good bait of mine i just haven't got on a hot rattle bait bite this year but uh some years i have crushed 
with rattle bait for walleye early season. The best thing with the North is you can fish for a different species every day. Walleye being probably one of the harder fish to fish for, I feel like in the North, just for the fact that there it's more of a, it kind of fishes like Lake of the Woods in the sense where the walleye go pretty deep in the winter time. Early season can be good and then late season can be really, really good as soon as you get into that uh, end of April in Northern Manitoba because the walleye season's open till the end of April. And uh, I have caught like, I've, I've had like 60 to 100 fish days in that end of April for walleye. This time of year, I'm looking to catch, if I, a, a 10 walleye in a day will be a really, really good day. Oh, it's dead seas. I hate to do this. I've only been fishing for an hour and a half, hour and 25 minutes. And I haven't seen a fish besides that pike. I think I'm going to make a move. And I think I might even just like drill around a little bit and see if I can locate some fish before I set up the shelter. It's cold moving right now. Is not great but i haven't had like i haven't had anything come by there's been no bait either and i feel like sometimes having some bait around would be a good thing so i'm just gonna man up and move a little bit instead of just dying here on this spot when it's cold out it's once you're set up it's always a pain in the neck to move it's even worse with cameras but we just got to do it we got to do it Oh boy, it's now one o'clock. I think when I packed up at that last spot to move, I think it was like 11.30 or maybe even 11. But I spent the last two hours, hour and a half, just driving around, punching holes. I did a little bit on the head camera and it died. And I just like, no, head down and just look. I felt like I was back in the game of inches looking for fish. I still haven't found anything, but I just got to a point where I'm like, I just gotta set up and fish for a little bit and maybe something will come around, but I'm not finding any bait. No, nothing moving around nothing period matt got one more walleye so worst case ontario which i played that trailer park boys clip a lot so i won't play it right now again it's one of my favorite lines from ricky he's the best anyways worst case ontario i'll fish for a little bit and maybe set up around matt for an evening bite it is the slowest part of the day but i'm like look at i'm iced right solid we are definitely been grinding I'm pretty sure I'm probably at the end of one auger battery already. I better bring this one inside to keep it warm. And yeah, I just got the heater pumping now. Get some get some heat going in there and hopefully slug something out. Nothing else. Days like today will humble you quickly. Okay, let's do it. At this point, I literally just want to catch one walleye. That's it. I just want to catch one walleye. That's all. That's all I want. Not greedy. Just want to catch one. I was nice and warm outside not much wind like yeah it's minus 20 something but it wasn't fishing so i was just drilling and looking and i definitely stayed warm enough like that wasn't an issue at all like i said i'm all i'm all snowed up but it's good this is the roughneck suit it's been one of my favorites so far best knee pads i found in any suit i've ever worn i think that's why i've liked it so much I saw my first fish I've only got one hole drilled in here right now, but if I start to see more fish, I'll drill another another hole. Just not sure how long I'm gonna be here yet. Got a fish down here. I dropped him. Little guy, so brought the rattle bait up. I'm gonna try the jig in the middle. It's coming up. It's coming up. I wonder if it's a Cisco. Either or. If even if it's a Cisco, it means there's some bait around at least. It's acting like a Cisco. It's acting like a Cisco. Let's see. There are some lakes up here that got a lot of Cisco's in that I kind of wanted to mess around with at some point. Yeah, Cisco. I had a feeling. Well, it's our second species of the day, fourth species of the trip. A Cisco, Cisco Disco baby. Actually, technically, that's our fifth species of the trip. We did catch a walleye the first day. Walleye, lake trout. We've got a nice pike. 
rainbow and cisco so that's actually technically five species so far i do have more confidence in this spot with there being ciscos around because well walleye eat ciscos lake trout eat ciscos pike eat ciscos anywhere else i've seen i haven't seen any fish on the bottom at all so at least we have some bait kicking around oh i hate to do it but i think it's time to check another spot i've got tiny ciscos kicking around i haven't seen a walleye yet matt's up to four or five walleye I believe he's tried another spot there and he caught another one in a different spot. So Matt's catching the walleye today. He's, uh, he should be the one on the video clearly. Okay. Spot three that I'm actually fishing, even though I've checked so much, so much more. It's got a text from Matt. So he's caught two more since I went by. So hopefully, hopefully, hopefully I'm close enough to him. No, just kidding. Hopefully, it doesn't matter. Either way, I enjoy today. Like, the the grind, the search for them, right? Like, all of that is just so much. It's fun. You can't score every time. The chase is what really intrigues me to this whole thing, right? Capturing the, the moment on video is more to it than anything to me these days. Like, it would have been nice today just to drive around and fish without cameras to try to search for them. It's always easier to catch them on camera when you already know where they are, like video camera type of thing, not underwater camera. But uh, yeah, it's a grind today. There's no doubt about it. Let's set up a little bit shallower. I'm 24-ish feet. Lots of rocks here right now. I'm going to look around here a little bit just to see kind of if I can see any fish swimming around. And then we're going to basically hope for a night bite. It's 307, so still got... Plenty of time to put some walleye on the ice yet. So I noticed something with all this running around. I get asked quite often what pole I use for um, my live scope, which I use an Arc Lab pole, an Arc Lab shuttle. But I do get also asked, like, how does it, how is it in the cold weather when you're outside fishing all the time? So anyway, right now, I've been in and out all day. Everything still slides and turns with ease. Look at the mess I have on the pole because I've been going outside. Now with this, within the water right now, I'll be able to kind of break this all free here, but this is, look at that, it's all frozen, yet I can still turn it, which is pretty amazing in that sense, but I'm gonna let it soak in the water for a bit now, and then I'll break it all apart. But that's from all the running and gunning I was doing. I was doing mostly running, not so much gunning. So far today I've tried some deep structure like big drop-offs with uh, a heavy incline i have fished some flats like some 24 or i didn't say i didn't fish all these spots some i, had, some I just drove around and looked but I've, i looked at some flats that were 20 to 24 feet uh, i fished some rock or i looked at some rock piles that were 22 to 25 feet again i'm set up on a rock pile here and like 22 to 24 feet it looks like the rocks kind of move in and out i never fished a lot of this style structure before live imaging with live imaging you can just see so much better you don't have that dead zone that you would on a typical flasher it's definitely changed the way i fish for a little bit in terms of like being able to get more in the rocks and i've learned lots this year with seeing the fish swim in and out of these rocks and like i showed on some of my other videos this year when I'm in the rocks, usually I bring them up higher, but that being said, sometimes you still catch them down in the rocks, getting rocky. One thing with fishing, hindsight is always 2020. as in if you could look back and do something different. Like if I could go back, I just never would have left my first spot and I would have just toughed it out all day at, the, at this point and hope for that fish to come by. But when you move around like that, you're obviously looking to change your change your day, right? Or change what's going on. And just easily could have found something too. But when you don't find anything, when you work that hard, you get a little bit like discouraged and be like, why didn't I just stay where I was? Right? Because a lot of times hook in the water is obviously the most important thing. Oh, there's a fish creeping in here on the left. I saw you down in those rocks, buddy. It's gonna drop down. I saw him. 
He's still coming. He's coming over here. He's coming. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, he... He hardly bumped it. Give me your chance. Oh, he's coming up to it, though. I had to, I had to take it off the ice. Oh, come on. This is a walleye. This is a walleye. This is a walleye. This is a walleye. We ate the minnow. He ate the minnow. He ate my dead stick. He ate my dead stick. <laughs> I couldn't catch him with the spoon. Actually, it was a scissor kick. I caught him with the dig jigging minnow. It's got to be a walleye. I'm sure it's going to be a walleye. Come on, buddy. Yes, 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 yes. Never have I been so excited for a 20 inch walleye before. I'm such a nerd. And ate the old jig in the minna. I think I, I had a chance on the scissor kick, but he came up and ate the dead stick. He engulfed this thing too. Oh, actually, no, it's not that bad. The hook just turned. Well, never have I been so excited for a, uh, I was a little bit bigger than 20, probably 21, 22, but we got her done. We chased down the elusive walleye. I like to say it's probably mostly because of Matt though. He was in an area that clearly has some fish coming around, not a lot. I think he's caught five or six today, so he's caught something. But uh, I tried a bunch of different areas, no dice. And there was just this walleye just creeping along the bottom in the next spot I picked. Boom! The old jigging minna comes through, putting in that extra line right now. Clearly paid off. <laughs> There's ice falling off my pants. Things are looking up. That was on the drench right here. I actually got two drenches going right now that I, I look at. I got my purple handles are my drenches. Oh boy. Um, another fish just came in. Yeah, anyway. My purple rods handles are my drenches. Okay, well they definitely travel in schools, right? Am I wrapped in my other line? I might be. <laughs> oh, it's just gonna show off the rods. Another fish just came right out of those rocks and hit the jig in the minna. Get up here, buddy. Get up here. Not a bad fish at all either. Ooh yeah, ooh yeah. Come on, come on. Get up here. It's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. That's not a bad fish at all. Oh, did we ever turn this day around? Wow. I'm so pumped right now. <laughs> Can't believe it obviously is like I get more excited about the adventure and accomplishing something than I do sometimes the fish that I caught. I'm going to get a measure on this one just because I'm, I'm curious, but I think it's about 23 ish. Yeah, it sure is. 23 and a half. Awesome. 23 and a half inch golden northern manitoba golden walleye so good so good and that one that one anybody could have caught because like i said i was showing off my rods and messing around and all of a sudden oh there's a fish out of nowhere <laughs> wow i can't believe this day turned around like that well maybe now i don't wish that i stayed where I was being the day that being said so much can change throughout the day too right like you can have a night bite somewhere you can have a morning bite you could have an afternoon bite you you just never know like there's two different ways to fish to ice fish one is to just sit on a spot and wait wait them out if you have confidence in that area and another one is to run and gun and track them down anyways like I was saying the purple handles are my drenches 39 medium lights. I use them mostly for a dead stick, but I did set this one up with a small scissor kick too, just because here I have two true grits with a frosty clownfish and a dinner bell, but there's just not being a lot of action. I thought maybe I should go something smaller, although that fish was quite aggressive. I probably could not use the small scissor kick right now, maybe use a dinner bell or a rattle bait, something like that. But we're on the board. Two fish, both with the jig and a minna and that is a quarter ounce kalen's google eye jig which is one of my favorite jigs with the longer shank for the frozen dead minnows so i am keeping my jig and a minnow a little bit higher as you can see there's some rocks down there right so i'm not dropping it too far where if there's a fish in the distance i want him to be able to like see that minnow that's way up there my active bait here which i had just taken out here for a second i'm fishing that one lower to the rocks and yes i'll pop it up once in a while too but uh 
I'm I am fishing it lower for the most part. The jig in the middle I'm keeping up about probably about right now I got it about almost four feet off of the bottom. I can always drop it quick if a fish is coming around that area, but I am keeping it up a little bit. I'll probably go actually maybe another six inches to a foot lower yet. But I am keeping it up quite a bit just so the fish that's further away can see that bait that's up a little bit higher. Oh, here. Might come back yet. It's coming back. It's coming back. Come on. It's on the other side of that rock. Turn the heater down a little bit. Come back. Here, it's, it's coming. It's coming back right tight to bottom. Here it comes. I think this is the same fish. There it is, it's tight to the bottom. You just see, you just see it moving ever so slightly on the bottom. Here it comes. There we go. Stay button. <laughs> that was cool. I wonder if this is a burbot maybe? If it's a walleye, it's a good walleye. It feels kind of burbot-ish. What do we got? If it's a wall not really fighting like a oh boy if this is a walleye i think it's a bourbon this fight is so weird it's fighting like a bourbon pretty sure which would make sense why it ate it so low potentially wonder if it's a burb this could be a big walleye too could be a big walleye but my instincts say bourbon what do we got what do we got I think it's a walleye. Come on. It's not huge. Oh, it's a lake trout. <laughs> you are not what I thought you were going to be at all. A laker. Okay. Well, that's a pretty uh, good multi-species day right there. I thought that was going to be either a burbot or a walleye. Ends up being a laker. Crazy multi-species day. I saw another fish creeping around there. Just popped my spoon before I let this one go, just in case. Wow. Usually Lakers are, are pretty aggressive and that thing was around a little bit sooner. I'm pretty sure I even missed it at one point. Oh, I got two fish here. Come on, come on, oh, come on. Oh, I got him, what's going on? I hit the roof, but I got him. I think I, I think I slipped on my on my reel. <laughs> that sounded like I broke a rod, but no, I didn't. Okay, well, the dinner bell comes through. The dinner bell comes through. That sounded awfully awful, but I think I just I think the reel slipped a little bit, or like I didn't have the line set in the right area. And then when I went up, it sounded like the line broke, but actually it was just my powerful hooks that are into the top of the uh, shack. Okay. Not a bad one right there. We definitely made, oh, just go down, just go down. <laughs> Once it was like falling out of my hands, I had two options to try to catch it or just like guide it towards the hole and I got it towards the hole. Oh, well, we, uh, we made, we made hay today out of nothing. That's for sure. I thought I snapped my rod, but it was just the power of the rod literally hitting the, top of the shelter <laughs> oh that was funny it's gonna be loud on video i'm sure so i'm talking about your line to really pay attention if your line gets caught over here more like not doesn't go all the way slide into the bale that little the little track system right there is a better shot of it if your line's there so then when you set it it'll lift up a little bit like that and you actually don't get a hook set see when you're in there it's good but you move it over a little bit and watch what it does to that bale it lifts that bale so that's something you have to really pay attention to and that's what happened there it, it just didn't slide back where it should have and when i set it it there was like no tension and boom right into the top of the shack that was awesome i was doing the i was doing the two-handed and he went for my 
my left hand here. He went by the jig in the middle and went to the dinner bell. This is the three eighths ounce dinner bell, the big size insanity pepper, which is a staple of mine for sure. Oh, and this rod is the true grit. I said earlier I was using the drenches. This one is the true grit. This is a 38 medium. All these rods are from frostbite and the, the dinner bells from frostbite as well. And the reels are from frostbite. These are 1000 size diesel reel. And they now have um, uh, a felt drag in here. The last year's model had a carbon drag and they switched over to a felt drag, which I feel the drag is just a little bit smoother now. For the price point, $50, that's probably one of the best reels that's out there for that price point. And it does have um, a low temperature grease in it. So it's a little bit better for fishing outside. It's not supposed to freeze up. Well, it's dark. Oh, this camera's foggy. I was gonna do my outro on this camera, but it's pretty, it's pretty foggy. So I'll do it on the main camera here that will wrap up today, day three at Viking Lodge. Not a crazy day of fishing, but I worked hard for it. I saw, I fished a bunch of different area or I at least looked at a bunch of different area. I fished three spots total where I actually flipped the shack over and fished for at least an hour or so. Other than that, I think I did about probably three hours of looking around where I just drilled holes uh, and scanned and looked. And this was the, best spot that i found near the end of the day and obviously i probably wouldn't even have ended up in this area if it wasn't for matt so thank you so much matt for coming out with me today and helping me locate some walleyes i think he said he ended up with eight or nine walleyes uh he had a pretty good day i ended up with four walleyes two ciscos one nice size pike a lake trout and uh yeah that's uh that's about it it was a good day so far it's been a good trip i think tomorrow we're gonna go hunt for some big pike i think is the goal maybe we'll start in the morning with walleye for a little bit and then transition over to pike we'll see how it goes but thank you so much for watching and don't forget get outside